Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Caitlin from Leave Me Alone Plans, and today we are getting into a topic that so many of you guys have been asking for it for the longest time, and that is grow lights. Now, I recently had a company, House Bright, reach out to me, and they were another inspiration for creating this video today. We'll talk more about them in a little bit, but overall today we're going to be going over the science of grow lights, some burning questions that you guys have had about grow lights, and then finally we will get into how I style grow lights in my home. So if any of those topics interest you, you can click to the exact time in the description down below or keep on watching and we will get into it right now. So if you're like me and your plant collection has been slowly but surely growing over time, you may be in a position where you're starting to run out of window space. And the problem with that is, is plants need light to grow. So having other options to provide light to your plants is really crucial if you want to continue diving deeper and deeper into the void of plants taking over your home. I know I do. The problem is, is there's so much information on the market about grow lights and if you don't have a master's degree in science, it can be a little confusing to dive through all the different parts of it and what's really important. That's why today I'm going to be helping you understand those. We're going to start out with some basic science that will really lay the foundation for the rest of the conversations that we're going to be having in the rest of this video. This segment is brought to you in part by Caitlin the Science Girl. Ah yes, science. I remember science, the thing that made me cry myself to sleep every night in college. Okay, so I'm going to try and make this as painless as possible, but basically plants turn light into energy using a process called photosynthesis. You might remember that word if you were a nerd like me in high school and were actually one of the people who stayed awake during biology. Now photosynthesis has two sides to the reaction. There is the light dependent reaction and then there is the light independent reaction. In the first step, the light dependent reaction, the chloroplasts in the plant cell, which is what gives plants its green color, with the exception of variegated leaves that tend to be white and have a much lower density of chlorophyll. Now keep that in the back of your mind because that is why, in many cases, very variegated plants need more light. So during the hours that light are available, the plant captures this light, takes it into the chlorophyll, and transforms that light into ATP. Now to put this into real life perspective, think of this like me taking money and buying coffee grounds with it. Just because the coffee grounds have energy in them themselves doesn't necessarily mean that I myself have energy just yet. I need to transform those coffee grounds into something that my body can absorb and take that energy in. That brings us into our second part of photosynthesis, the light independent reaction. Now you might also know this reaction as the Kelvin cycle or my favorite, the dark reaction. During this time, plant cell metabolizes that ATP into 3GP, a carbon compound that can actually be used for energy by the plant. This allows the plant to do awesome things like unfurl its leaves or put out new growth. Or going back to our analogy, this would be like me taking those coffee grounds and transforming them into actual coffee that I therefore drink, and now I have energy. Okay, it's not a perfect analogy, but if you're really into the nitty gritty science and understanding the full extent of these chemical reactions, Crash Course does a great video on this. I highly recommend going and watching that if you're interested, because despite my very official lab coat and uh, scientific appearance, I probably messed something up in there along the way. Additionally, a couple more scientific terms that we will be using throughout the course of this video, Watts, Lumens, and Kelvin. Kelvin is simply going to describe the temperature of the light, so lights can either be cooler or warmer. They will be different temperatures on the Kelvin scale. That leaves us with wattage and lumens. Now back in the day when people only used incandescent bulbs, wattage tended to be the measurement that people used to understand how bright lights are. However, nowadays with modern LEDs, which all the lights that we will be talking about in this video happen to be, it brings lumens into play. Nowadays, we more so consider watts the amount of energy that it's drawing from our outlets and in turn how much it's going to cost us to run these bulbs whereas lumens is more directly related to the brightness. Now, if you combine these two measurements, you get a measurement called lamp efficiency, which is simply lumens divided by watts, and it's a great way for you to be able to compare different light bulbs and understand how much bang you're getting for your buck. Okay, well, at this point, these goggles on my head are killing me. I need to take them off. And that concludes today's episode of Caitlin the Science Girl. Okay, now that we've gotten the science... Now that we've gotten the science portion out of the way, I want to get into some questions that people commonly have about grow lights, and I know that I had myself when I was buying my first one. So how long should you run your grow lights throughout the day? Well, it really depends on the specific plants that you have under your grow lights, but a standard rule of thumb is somewhere between 12 to 16 hours is typically seen as ideal for most plants. 
well, what about just leaving them on for 24 hours? Does that work? And to that, I'm going to give you an answer that I will be giving many times throughout this video, which is that it kind of depends on the plant. While studies show that some plants can do absolutely fine with 24 hours of light without getting any break, other plants need those periods of darkness to be able to metabolize that energy that we talked about earlier and go into that late independent cycle. Now do note that for most plants, that late independent cycle is happening constantly all the time, even when light is hitting the plants. So in most cases, you in theory could run your lights for 24 hours, but at some point it's really diminishing returns and you're really just burning energy for the sake of running them 24 hours. Now I know one of the biggest struggles that I started running into when I was first using my grow light setup was the fact that I would constantly have to remember to turn them on and off. I am very forgetful and for that reason I highly recommend putting your lights on a digital timer. I'll link the one that I use down below. There are a ton of options on Amazon, but basically you set the timer once and then every day the lights will turn on and off at your pre-designated times. So you can get those exact 12 or 16 hour time frames that most plants really enjoy. Well, maybe you're thinking to yourself, I don't wanna be running grow lights for 16 hours. Can I just run it for a couple hours and bring the light super close to the plant? Um, not really. So something I talk about all the time on my channel is how living here in Arizona, we have super bright sunlight. If you leave those plants in Arizona sun, they crisp up super fast. This is gonna be kind of a similar thing that you'll see if you just bring your glow, grow lights super close to a plant for a couple hours. You can absolutely burn the foliage and overall it's just not a natural way for your plants to get the light. It's going to be better if you can leave it a little farther away and run those lights as close to those 12 to 16 hours as possible. Now this question was one of the biggest things that I tried to figure out when I was first getting into grow lights and that is, does the color of the light matter? And again, I'm going to have to say it kind of depends. Not only is it going to depend on the plant that you're growing specifically, but it's really going to depend on the goals that you have for that plant. So typically cooler lights on the Kelvin scale are considered better for bringing out more foliage and more leaves on your plants. Conversely, if you're looking for flowers or if you're growing crops and looking to get a bountiful harvest, then light that is warmer on the Kelvin scale, more like those reds and pinks and purples, are going to be better for that. However, best case scenario is going to be a combination of those red and blue lights together, as combining them allows the plant to absorb the light more readily into the chlorophyll and start that photosynthetic process. With that said, what about just white lights? I know so many people have a preference for those lights, myself included, just from an aesthetic standpoint. Standpoint. And while a high concentration of red and blue light can be really beneficial for your plants, a full spectrum bulb that is white light is going to do a great job as well. If you think about plants in nature getting light from the sun, the sun is a white light. It is not purple, it is not blue, it is not that ugly blurple color in between that most grow lights are. It's white light. Now something that kind of blew my mind the first time that I heard it, but the reason that the light from the sun or any white light is white is for the fact that it is a combination of every light color on the spectrum, all combining to be a white light. If you're a hipster that wears Pink Floyd t-shirt, you might be familiar with this image. That's a great demonstration of exactly how white light comes out when all the colors in the spectrum are combined. So overall, it's really gonna come down to what your goals are with your specific plant, but ultimately, if you wanna opt for those white lights instead of the purple, you will absolutely be okay to do that. You're getting a full spectrum of light on that plant from all different colors, and you will absolutely see results by doing that. Well, now that we know that white light can be effective for plants, maybe you're asking yourself, can I just turn on my ceiling lights and call it a day? Again, the answer is, Kind of. While turning on those lights will have a better effect than no light at all, do note that the farther away that you get from the light, the faster you'll have diminishing returns on the effects of those light. The light is going to be the most concentrated directly under the center of the light, and as you move outward in the radius, that light is going to be dimmer and weaker and less effective for your plants. So. While it may help, it also may not be enough to fully supplement natural light for your plants. Now, all the lights I'm gonna be discussing in this video today happen to all be LEDs, so you may be asking yourself, do I need to use LEDs for plants? And the answer to that is absolutely not. Personally, I opt for LEDs because they're inexpensive to run, they're easily accessible, and they aren't going to overheat, causing your plants to crisp up and burn. Now, those were the main questions that I had when I was first getting into grow lights, but of course, if you have other questions about them, drop them in the comments down below. Now, real quick in this video, I just wanted to introduce y'all to Housebrite. Housebrite was kind enough to reach out to me and send me their grow bulb, which I will unbox for you guys in camera. Um, I've actually been using this grow light for a while now, but I just wanted to unbox it for dramatic effect. Ooh, 
Ah. Housebrite is a small family owned business and that specializes in grow lights for plants. Their grow lights come in three awesome colors. I opted to get the warm light, but you can also get them in a cooler light or a red and blue light that will be really great for blooms and flowers. All of their lights are full spectrum and 1200 lumens while only having a 20 wattage output, so you know that they'll be super efficient and aren't going to overheat on you. And if you're extra nerdy like myself and care about things like photosynthetic photon flux, these lights have a PPF rating of 140. Now the wonderful people over at Housebrite didn't just want me to try out these lights, they also wanted you guys to try them out and they are giving everyone a 10% discount. I will put the link down in the bio so if you are interested feel free to check them out the final thing I wanted to talk about in today's video is something that I struggled with for a long time when I was first looking into grow lights which is styling them in a way that is aesthetic now I've said this many times in my videos before but houseplants for me are of course very much a way to enjoy the hobby and take care of things and collect plants but they're also part of my household decor and with that said I don't just want to throw grow lights willy-nilly all over the house and have it look like some kind of industrial operation in here that's why styling them to me is very important. And here are some of my favorite ways to style them in my home. First is simply by buying cheap lighting fixtures and placing them directly above my plants. Particularly ones like this one are great because they're adjustable and you can change the height and distance that you have them from your plants. The really cool thing too is that house lights bulbs fit into any fixture so you can pop their light into any existing lamp that you have and not have to have all kinds of weird industrial looking things around your house. It blends right in and provides great coverage when you have it onto your plants. Another place I love having light in my home is the underside of my kitchen cabinets. I was lucky enough in my apartment that I moved into to have these pre-installed but in my past apartments I've actually installed these myself under the cabinets and they work amazing. The plants that I have underneath here absolutely thrive in an area that would otherwise be uninhabitable for plants. I of course just have the standard factory bulbs that my apartment had when I moved in here and those work great but if you're looking for an extra boost you can buy strip lights that are specifically designed for growing plants and install those underneath. The next area in my home that I like to place plants near my lights is right hanging off of the vanity lights I have in my bathroom themselves. This is where I hang my string of hearts and if you have string hearts you know that they are light loving plants. I was a little hesitant at first but having my plants hanging right below these lights actually allows them to really thrive and they've almost tripled in size since I have bought these plants. So if you have lights like this around your house and are looking for a place to put hanging plants, I highly, highly recommend hanging a couple of them off your vanity lights if your significant other will let you get away with it. Finally, when I first got into grow lights, I bought a bunch of these purple clamp lights to put around my home. Now again, I personally don't love the look of having these just hanging all over my house, but something that I really enjoy doing with these recently is placing them on the backside of my bookcases to backlight the plants that I have inside of them. This creates a super cool effect and once again is a great way to add light to spaces that would otherwise be uninhabitable by plants. Now I'm using these pre-clamped lights of course, but again you can use whatever you want from normal bulbs to strip lights, whatever is easier for you. Okay, well I feel like I've been talking forever. This really wraps up everything that I wanted to talk about in regards to the grow lights today. But as always, if you guys have questions that I did not answer in this video, please drop them in the comment section down below and I will do my very best to get back to you in a timely manner. If you found a portion of this video helpful, then please don't forget to hit that like button. And if you enjoyed watching, then also hit that subscribe button for more videos like this in the future. Finally, don't forget to visit Housebrite's website at the link below to get 10% off your grow lights today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.